expect growth, growth to moderate in coming quarters. Of course. Well, Powell, by refusing to treat climate yes, change yes, like sure. a systemic okay. risk that like you. you are putting us at Thank you very much. Disaster. Thank you very much. Climate change yep. will end in Thank you. Just close the door. Market. We do have breaking news in the cybersecurity world, which is why um, we're breaking into this interview. So reports say Chinese bank ICBC has been hit by a ransomware attack, and the U.S. Treasury market, as a result of that, um, has been disrupted. This according to the Financial Times. We're going to get more right now with Bloomberg's Shanali Basic. Shanali, what do we know? Uh, listen, we have the Financial Times now reporting that ICBC, one of China's largest banks here, was hit with a ransomware attack. And remember, they're uh, a very significant significant intermediary in the Treasury market. The SIFMA has told its members that this has been part of the reason here uh, that the system has kind of clogged up, if you will, during that auction that we saw a little bit before. The attack had prevented ICBC, according to the Financial Times, from settling Treasury trades on behalf of other market participants. A large executive at a major bank also telling the paper that such a large party on the fixed income clearing corp uh, creates major concerns, potentially impacting the liquidity of Treasury markets. Now, I don't want to say this type of scenario is like a nightmare here, but it is certainly a bad dream. Uh, these are things that people are very concerned about when it comes to big liquid markets, particularly such um, a critical one to all credit markets in the world, of course, Matt. Absolutely, Shanali. And on, on a day when we're already seeing a lot of action in the Treasury market, we'll have to watch this one very closely. The LAPD deploying a robot dog to assist with an hours-long standoff on a Metro bus involving an armed suspect. Everything came to a peaceful end. Kate you mentioned this robot dog. This new technology really played a very big part in bringing this situation to a calm resolution. Now, dog to assist, saying the use of this technology really helped resolve the situation without putting any officers or community members in harm's way. Welcome to the crypto teacher. And you know I come back with that video just to make you think. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Supporting great content by hitting the cash app and by joining the Patreon. And guys, you heard that correct. Jerome Powell told them to shut the effing door. And for some reason, the climate protesters are following the fit. Guys, we know this is all part of the plan. It's all a show. Sit back, get your popcorn, and let it play out. And speaking of a movie, guys, we know that hack is coming right around the corner. We have China's ICBC said it was hacked, and that's the reason why the treasury market was so bad. And guys, when I saw the results of the treasury market, I sent a post inside the stock channel let people know because we know when the auction is bad, stocks are going to be bad. But you guys know how I feel about hacks. And we know nobody wants this long-term paper. The only person buying this long-term paper is Japan. And that's because we're forcing them to. And remember the crypto teacher told you. And guys, we have the robot dog. First, it was introduced in New York. Now it's in Los Angeles. And listen to the talking points of the actual reporter. This new technology. It resolved the issue without putting the officer in jeopardy or the community at harm. And guys, we know that's how they're going to sell it. If you're a police officer, get you a new job. Robocop is right around the corner. But then, guys, we have blockchain, we have Neuralink, we know crime is going to change. And then plus these 15-minute cities, it's not going to be the same crimes. The only crimes that you may be able to get away with, of course, are those white-collar crimes, those smart nerds. That's the only crime that you'll have going forward. We already know there's going to be cameras everywhere, and social credit is right around the corner if the sheep don't wake up. And remember the crypto teacher told you. The U.S. economy has been stronger than expected. It's been more resilient. And uh, this year is just remarkable, really. You know, so many uh, forecasters had, an, had a recession this year, and it's nothing like that. It's going to be close to 2.5% growth this year. But that's, that's really, that's probably, in my thinking, probably a significantly a function of strong demand. I, th I think monetary policy is generally working in the ways that we think it's, it should work, which is interest-sensitive spending, asset prices, exchange rate. Um, 
I think there are some aspects of the U.S. economy where you can argue that it's a little different, and that would be, for example, uh, households who, who are in low-rate mortgages are, are not selling their homes, but they're also not, they're not feeling the effects of higher rates because they, they really don't want to get out of those mortgages. Same thing with companies. Uh, any company that had access to fixed-rate borrowing and didn't use that uh, in the last three or four years would be facing, but there, there are very few companies that are in that. So it may be that the U.S. economy is is structurally a little bit more resilient to to interest rates, but I don't think that there's I, I don't see at this point any um, anything that seems to be structurally or materially in in the, in the nature of a difference. Um, go back to something that Ken talked about, which is central bank independence. Unsurprisingly, I'm I'm a believer in central bank independence. Um, <laughs> But it, it really is just an institutional arrangement that exists uh, because the elected government allows it to exist. And as long as it serves the public well, it, it's, it's a fine institutional arrangement. And I, I think it's, um, it's easy to forget that you know, we, we have this precious independence. It should be very, very rare in a functioning democracy that you have an institution that has d- the degree of independence that we have. Of course, we, str- we strive all the time to be democratically accountable and transparent. But I think that the temptation to wander into exciting new issues that really are the business of the elected government is is a strong one and is to be resisted. And I, because I think that's, when I think of ways that, that, that uh, uh, independence could, could be undermined, to me, that's, that's right at the top of the list. On the implications of, of higher rates, it's, um, uh, w- when we move uh, the federal funds rate around, the real the real point is to affect broader financial conditions and broader financial conditions then then affect the the economy the real economy in ways that we broadly understand but um, so we don't target any one financial condition we look at so we look at broader financial conditions so it's very hard to draw a direct line from one particular thing like higher bond yields to what monetary policy should do so but so the first thing you would look at though is you'd look for persistent changes even then, and so then the question is, and, and Gita touched on this appropriately, which is why why are, are longer run longer run rates going up? And it really, the, the, you know, the, the reason they're going up really matters. So we have to factor that in. So it's something we're looking at. We don't. We're certainly not going to ignore a significant tightening in financial conditions through that channel, but we don't have to decide. You know, the, we, we've uh, we're, we're we're moving carefully now. We've moved very fast and. And rates are now restrictive, and so we're 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 going to be looking at this question, and uh, not something we're trying to make a um, a decision on right now. In terms of you know, has the new the, I take your question to be why are long rates higher? I think there are many candidate explanations, and five or six of them. It's easy to get to a half dozen explanations. I think we really don't know. Uh, I think one thing to point out though is people are experiencing this. Is, these higher rates are actually affecting people's mortgages, the costs of their of all their floating rate debt is is being affected, so it's having an effect on the economy. Um, you know that the standard thinking has been that this was largely about term premium. Then the question is why term premium? I, I don't want to try to get dive into all of that today, but it's something we're looking at carefully and uh, and just seeing in terms of um, in terms of uh, you mentioned over tightening, but how how are we thinking? So um, I would just go back at, at the beginning. Uh, Really, the question was to move as fast as we could. As I went through with the, the, the chronology, uh, in early 2022, it became obvious that we, you know, we needed to tighten policy as quickly as we could, as and also in, at a reasonable pace. So, so we did, and that was the main thing was speed. The second question was going to be how high to go, and we're still on that question. You know, we're still on the question of of a. Uh, uh, policy stance that's sufficiently restrictive to bring inflation down to 2% over time. The next question will be how long to keep rates restrictive. And so we're looking at, you know, it, there is no magic to it. We're looking at uh, the incoming data, of course, but really we're looking at the implications for the outlook. It's really the, what, what are we learning about the outlook, the balance of risks, and all those things. And we're trying to make a judgment at this point whether we, whether we need to do more. And as I said, we, we did move very quickly. The, the speed is no longer, you know, the main thing. The main thing now is to is to try to get to that get to that right level. Uh, of course, we don't want to go too far, but um, at the same time, we know the the biggest mistake we could make would be to really to fail to get inflation under control. 
So that's not going to happen. We're, you know, we, we will keep at this in, uh, until we until we succeed. So moving carefully and, uh, and, and looking at all the evidence and trying to make, uh, uh, smart decisions on behalf of the public. And we had Jerome Powell should have skipped this one. Again, he goes back to the United States. The economy is in great shape. No recession this year. And the United States economy has been in a recession. And then also the global economy also. And then he talks about the housing market. But we know the Fed is controlling the supply and demand. By raising these rates this high, nobody wants to refinance and nobody wants to sell. And with these high rates, small and medium-sized banks are being destroyed. And we know that trickles down to small business. Small business runs the United States. And in 2024 to 2027, we're going to see a mass exodus, mass layoffs. And remember the crypto teacher told you. And Jerome Powell talks about the Fed independence. And when you look at all the issues that were caused, over these last 15, 16 years, you can point it to the Fed. Zero percent interest rates for almost 10 years. And then turned around and printed $8 trillion And really said, oh, don't worry about inflation. Now they're raising rates to fight the inflation that they cause. And we know higher rates for longer is destroying this legacy market. And this is exactly part of the plan so then therefore, the fourth industrial revolution can rise. Remember, guys, we're in a fragmented world. So therefore, they can bring in these robots, algorithms, and drones. But before that, we got to have a crisis. And that's why we're hearing the drums a beat. And we know there's going to be a big enough event over the next few years. So therefore, they can build. This digital transformation is happening right in front of the sheep's eyes. And remember, the crypto teacher told you. Because he knows when it comes to the NWO, it's all planned out. You have a wonderful day. We're going to a different economy, and we're going to be learning more about that uh, as we go. But clearly, we're, we're, we're learning that things can be done uh, from remote, remote locations. We're learning that technology can replace people even more than we thought. We're not going back to the same economy. We're, going, we're recovering, but to a different economy. And it'll be one that is more leverage to technology and i worry that that is going to make it even more difficult than it was for for many workers in silicon valley and my friends who work in technology know that what we did to the manufacturing workers we are now going to do to the retail workers the call center workers the fast food workers the truck drivers and then even bookkeepers accountants uh, insurance agents lawyers and on and on through the economy so what happened to the manufacturing workers is a very clear sign and so we'll import Chinese-based CBDC technology. So it's going to be CBDC in a box uh, provided to you by the People's Bank of China. But every stock, every bond, every currency, every commodity, every piece of art, every private business, every piece of real estate will eventually be a token on a blockchain, an entry on a ledger, permanent and immutable. We will have truth instead of trust. And we will save over $7 trillion a year. Six to 8% of global GDP is wasted by the friction of the trust industry that's necessary when you have dual entry accounting. With triple entry accounting, which is what a blockchain is, mm -hmm. we get rid of all of that friction. It's a beautiful future. Like what you see in China and their social credit scoring systems, right? If we get identity wrong, you know, it could be a tool to enslave humanity. And if we get it right, it could be a tool to liberate humanity as an American. You know, uh, uh, I'm obviously rooting for the, the one that's on the side of freedom. Bitcoin is an international asset. And also, I do believe the role of crypto is, um, it is it, it, it's digitizing gold. I actually believe this technology is going to be very important. I am, I, you know, look at it. We have been part of a huge revolution in investing through ETFs. We believe that ETFs will be changing the whole way we invest. Many people still use it as a means, well, people are investing it for indexing. No, the majority of people who are putting money in an index, in an ETFs are active investors that are buying exposure. The entire bond market is being transformed as we talk right now. 
I believe the next generation for markets, the next generation for securities will be, will be tokenization of securities. Um, we will, and if we could have that distributed ledger that we know every beneficial owner, every beneficial uh, seller, we all have our, our, our code right. of who's buying, who's selling, instantaneous settlement. And think about it, it changes the whole ecosystem. Crypto teacher and the new world order book, plus the three kids books, it's time to re-educate. Also, new cryptos, Coinbase, Bitchu, Binance. Do not forget book links and crypto links are in the description. The stock channel, guys. Don't forget to go like, subscribe, spread everywhere. You have your Kobo, your chip stocks, your banking, your gaming. While everybody's sitting at home, get on stocks to see where the biotech stocks. And while everybody's at home wishing, they were still getting that free money. What are they doing? Drinking and smoking weed. Don't forget about those stocks and you have a wonderful day. The most powerful person in the world is the storyteller. The storyteller sets the vision, values, and agenda of an entire generation to come, Steve Jobs. And guys, you know I truly believe in this. When you look at the New World Order, they're the storytellers. And that's the reason why I wrote my New World Order book. But guys, now it's time to change the current generation. And I wrote three kids books. You know I love the Trinity because I understand the power that's in it. So I have three books. We have an opportunity to change the generation, to educate. Not just me, but I want to show you that I take action on a daily basis. And I want you to take action on a daily basis. Whether it's your job, whether it's in your community, we have an opportunity right now to educate the masses. I posted this on my Twitter account. Please share, but this is a short clip of the three books. There's going to be a clothing line and action figure. Please get these books for your kids, nephews, cousins, friends, so therefore we can start the re-education now. Because as we see, the fourth industrial revolution foundation is definitely here. Robots, algorithms, drones, taking humanity out the picture. We have to re-educate. But let's get into the video. Part one, King Yashua and Grandma Tim. It's mandatory to get part one, part two, and part three of this series. It's time to re-educate Generation Z.